another day, another coffee, and in today's video, I'm going to give you a bit of an insight into my general process into preparing and rigging my characters for poses. But if you're new around here, my name is Keelan, and thank you for clicking on this channel. So if you're ready to learn something new, start a blender, follow along with me, and let's jump on into the video. Alright, before we get started, you can either go ahead and rig your own character or feel free to download the one I've supplied a link to in the description. That's just going to give you this guy completely unrigged and ready to play around with. And if you're a Patreon, if you haven't seen already, you've actually got the full rigged Rocket Man version of this, so that's on the Patreon if you need it. But as is tradition for this channel, let's just have a little sip of our coffees before we continue. Uh, and let's get on with the tutorial. So, what we're going to do today? Well, I broke this video down into three little sections for you because somebody did ask. It was actually nobody special, and that, that I, I don't mean they were nobody special. I just mean the actual name was nobody special. But remember, you are special and you're all amazing. So, what question did they ask? They said, "What? What is your general process before you begin rigging your character?" So, for example, what do I tend to do? when we come to having all these different separate parts and such, and how does this work before, you know, we start to rig. So my general process, which may vary between designers, I tend to join anything that's part of the main mesh, I tend to join them all together. So that when we apply our poses and our armatures, everything is nicely weighted and good to model or pose, animate, whatever you want to do with this thing. So as an example, let's go ahead and hide the glasses because we're not going to include the glasses in this because they sit on top of the mesh, just 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 like clothing. What we're going to do though is join up the eyes, the eyebrows, because right now they're all separate objects. And the first thing I do before I do this is to apply any existing modifiers on these current objects, except the subdivisions because when we join these up to the main body the body already has this subdivision modifier applied and if i was to apply the subdivisions here then when it comes to joining it with this body it's gonna subdivide it again to the point where you've got this crazy amount of subdivisions on your shape which is completely completely unnecessary and you're just going to crash your computer <laughs> depending on how strong your computer that is so anyway so what i'm going to do is start from the top let's look at my shape so i have nothing on there other than the subdivision but i have a solidify modifier here so i'm going to apply that and then the eyebrows i've got a mirror modifier that i need to apply same with the eyes mirror modifier i think it's the same with the ears too yep apply the mirror modifier and I don't think there's anything else I need to apply here. Nope, that's looking pretty good. Only subdivisions left. So all that's left to do is to highlight everything on the head. Then we're going to shift click on the head to make sure it's the last thing selected. And we're going to do control J. And what does control J do? Well, control J means join in Blender. But quick note, I am not in Blender 2.9. Some key inputs or shortcuts may vary with versions, so just remember that's the join functionality. If it doesn't work for you, just see what the shortcut is for your version of Blender on, you know, simple Google search. But now our character is actually good to rig, because if I click on any of these objects now, they're all part of the same mesh, it's looking good. But if you did want to edit these separately, they're still technically separate objects, so if you tab into edit mode on our character here, and hover over the eyes, say you can press L and still select these as individual objects should you wish to. But I'm going to come out of here and now it's time to move on to adding a basic skeleton to this character. And to give you a real world example of how I use rigs and armatures in Blender, we're actually going to, we're actually going to take advantage of the Rigify add-on. Now, very popular, you'll see it, you know, with lots of different designers. I think it came in Blender 2.8, but in order to enable it, just go into Edit, Preferences, and if you search for Rig, down here you can see we've got Rigify. Just enable that and you're good to go. It's gonna be really easy to rig and animate your characters. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hide this platform. We don't need it right now, so I'm just gonna press H to get rid of that. And let's go ahead and add in a simple meta rig. So to do that, make sure you're in object mode and we're going to press shift A. And now in our armatures down here, you've got a couple of new options, but 
but we're going to go into basic and just click on the basic human meta rig and what's this right here so i'm going to go into solid view i'm going to press alt z to go into x-ray mode and i'm just going to scale this down so s to scale till it's a runabout in line with the size of our character and this is a nice pre-made rig that we can customize and apply to a character to you know start doing some posing and animating so the first thing we're going to need to do is to line everything up nicely so i'm going to tab into edit mode on this here i am in x-ray mode but what you can do is with your armature selected come into our object data properties here for the armature kind of looks like a little stick man down here and then we're going to go into viewport display and turn on in front and this is just going to make sure that we can see the bones through the mesh no matter where they are okay and now that all that's left to do is to line this up and before we do make sure you come up here to the top right and enable this mirroring option so this is going to mirror across the x-axis so if i move these bones over here it's going to do the exact same on the other side so i'm going to bring these up and then i'm going to bring the hand towards the hand straighten this out over here and then i'm gonna go ahead and click here shift click over here press x and delete those bones because they are technically breast bones so if you've got a female character or something with breasts in this area then you can use those bones but we have no need today and then let's go ahead and straighten these ones up so i'm just gonna highlight all these pressing g to move i'm gonna go into my right side view and do the same again so i'm just gonna press g to move these over slightly i'm gonna highlight all of the foot g to move these over slightly till everything lines up relatively nicely and into my top view because the arm isn't quite there yet so i'm gonna highlight the elbow g to move and bring the hand into the center a little bit more. We're not going to do each finger because we're going to keep this tutorial nice and basic. Oh, I also need to touch up the head too. So back to edit mode, into right view. I'm just going to make sure that this lines up nicely with the top of the head. Bring this up so it's sort of in line with the head here. And straighten out the neck. And just bring this over ever so slightly. But I think that's most of the rig set up. All that's left to do here really now is to do some parenting. And so let's go back into object mode. And what I'm going to do is, I've got the feet here as well, which are a separate object to the body, but we're going to pair them all to the, uh, the rig here. So let's click on the feet, hold shift, click on the hand here. So I'm making sure that I don't click on the clothes. You may want to hide the clothes. So just make sure when you shift clicking on the main body, click on one of the hands or the head, just to make sure you're not clicking on the clothing there. And then lastly, shift click on the meta rig. And then all that's left to do is press Control P. And in here, you've got these options, armature deform, but we're going to do armature deform with automatic weights. And that's done very quickly. And what that is going to do is it's going to automatically do its best to apply a weight to each bone, which will control its general area of influence on each section of your mesh. So if this works successfully now, it should work. So if I click on the armature go up here into pose mode click on one of these pieces and do r to move you can see now that this successfully is parented to our mesh and you might be thinking okay what about the clothes well all you need to do really is to go back into object mode and click on your clothing shift click on your armature and do control p again with automatic weights now if i go back into pose mode once again now it successfully also moves our clothing too and you can use this to do some basic like basic poses and such but what we're going to do is take advantage of the rigify modifier to go ahead and create a more advanced rig which will help you do some animating and such so let's move on to that now so the rigify add-on actually makes it super super easy to generate a rig for this character so what i want you to do first is click on our armature here and we're going to do Control a and apply a rotation and scale this is just going to make sure that the generated rig is at the correct scale and fits the character really well and then whenever you're ready click on your armature and come over here into our object data properties and click the generate rig button depending on your system this can vary in time but as this is a nice simple rig it shouldn't take us too long so let's go ahead and do that now 
All right, so what is this? What is this like interesting looking shapes? Well, initially we don't actually need this armature anymore. So I'm gonna hide this. You could delete it, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna hide it. And now we've got this more advanced rig. This is a rig that the Rigify modifier has set up for us based on the general meta rig that we initially lined up with the character. So this, you know, basically it gave it some variables. I know it knows where the elbows are, it knows where the knees are, and it knows where to bend the joints and how to move the character. So all that's left to do is to highlight everything, including the feet, shift click on the new rig, and then do control P with automatic weights once again. Okay, cool. And now if we go ahead, I'm going to jump into material preview just to make it a little bit more easy for you to see. But if I go into my new rig, go into pose mode, and I'm going to click on this little box. We've got a whole bunch of different joints and bits to move now, but I'm going to go ahead and click on this box. And if I press G to move, you can see just like that, we've got a funky little bit of motion that we can do with this character. His knees bend, his elbows bend, and they all bend generally in the right direction. Whoop! <laughs> generally in the right direction and give us a nice feature that we can animate with. And if you want to reset everything to its original location, just press A to select the entire rig and press Alt G and Alt R to reset the position and location. Right, so you may have noticed we are having a slight issue up near the top here. So if I rotate his head, notice how his teeth and his mouth aren't following suit. They're not playing ball here. And this is a good example of situations that, that can arise due to weight. Now, what is weight? So what I'm going to do is if I go into object mode and I click on my mesh here and then go into weight mode, you can see it's automatically got it selected for me, but if you go into your object data properties and you've got the vertex groups here. Now in this area, we've got a whole bunch of different vertex groups that the Rigify modifier created for us. I do know that the highest value of spine is going to be where the head is. So come right down to the bottom to DEF spine 006. If I click on it here, you can see we've got this nice color scheme, but what does this mean exactly? Well, the darker the color, the deeper the red, the more influence that that this vertex group has on this general area. So you can see that the teeth are blue, which means they are not being affected by this current rig. So how do we fix that? Well, what we need to do is go back into object mode, click on our mesh, tab into edit mode, and we need to apply a maximum of one weight to the to the teeth here. So I'm going to press L and L to select both of these teeth. Make sure I have the DEF spine 006 um, active. And then now we can just click assign, making sure that your weight is set to a, the one value. And now this should have applied the weight to that section of the mesh, which means it should now animate. So if we go back into pose mode on our character, and if I click the section and press R, now we can see the teeth successfully also move along with our character. And we can just double check that. So we go into our mesh, back into weight. The teeth are now bright red and being affected successfully. Congratulations, you've diagnosed your first weight issue. That's if you had the same issue. Issues may vary. <laughs> okay, so if you've made it this far, I, I do want to say congratulations. Well done. You're doing really well, and I want to give you a pat on the back. So, can you feel that? That's, that's me patting you on the back. Well done. <laughs> but the last thing that I'm going to do here is to set up a basic pose for this character. And then I'm going to speed through a general backdrop to you know make it nice and pretty before I render this out and I suppose the challenge I want you to do is to maybe do something a little bit different here and then you can render send it to me on Instagram or Twitter and then I can put it on my Instagram story and show show off how cool my subscribers are so with that let's do a little bit of posing on our character here so what I'm gonna do to my guy is very basic so I'm gonna jump into pose 
And initially, I think I'm just going to click on the central box. So this controls his general center of, of mass, I, prefer, I suppose. But I'm going to do R and Z to rotate him whoop, a little bit to the left. And you, you might notice it is a little bit laggy. What I'd recommend as well, before I carry on, is in my mesh modifiers here, I've still got this subdivision which is unapplied. I find having subdivision modifiers unapplied on a mesh when you're rigging tends to slow it down a little, a little bit. I, I don't really know why, but I expect it's because it's constantly trying to recalculate, you know, the subdivisions as you're moving it around. So it might be worth just making a backup, then applying any subdivisions on your main mesh that you're looking to rig. And then if I go back into posing and go R and Z here, you can see it's moving much more smoothly and I'm just going to have a much easier time when it comes to, you know, posing this guy. So I've angled his central center of mass off to the left a little bit. I am going to click the little red area for his right foot there and do R and Z and angle this off to the left slightly, maybe slightly turn his right foot too. So when it comes to, you know, posing him, I tend to primarily just stick to these red you know these red S sections so I wouldn't really recommend moving these little blue joints in between because they are very fixed so if I stuck his arm up like this and started moving it around it's a very fixed area so if you stick to the red joints and the yellow joints that should you know be as much as you need really for the most part okay so I'm also going to turn his head back towards me so he's looking at me straight on and then I'm going to bring his hand down to his general hip area I'm going to do R to rotate and then you can double tap R to give you a bit more freedom on the hand rotation. I'm just going to move it so it kind of looks like he's got his hand on his hip maybe, maybe around, around here, something like that. And then you can, you know, you can put more time into this, but I'm just going to try to make this as quickly as I can. And then I'm going to bring his hand up. And I do want that elbow to turn the other way. So what I'm going to do is click on the red arrows. This sort of decides where the elbow is supposed to join, uh, supposed to bend. So I'm going to press R, Y, Y twice to rotate it on its local Y axis. And then just, uh, if I can just get this to spin the right way, there we go. And just so it bends that way. And that looks a lot more natural. I need his hand as well to be flipped the other way. So I'm going to click on the hand, do R and X to flip this over. So we got the palm of his hand facing upwards. Might want to bring this up slightly so it doesn't look as, you know, distorted. And then he's like, ha ha, there is something in my hand. <laughs> I am so childish sometimes, I cannot help myself, but I think that's looking pretty good. Alright, cool, so that's the general pose I want to go with. I am going to bring back the platform that we had at the start. Cool, and then I'm going to add some elements and a backdrop to this and, you know, show you what I've got before I render this out. So I'm going to skip on in to the next bit. Let's just go with some sound effects. Okay, so here we are. I went ahead and just added a simple backdrop and hovering in his hand is the glorious YouTube play button. So with that, you know, as long as you've gone ahead and set yourself up a nice little scene, I've gone ahead and lined up my camera to a nice full HD resolution. Feel free to adjust, you know, to perhaps 1080 to 1080 in your scene properties, in your output properties. If you plan to post this thing on, you know, Instagram or your other social media. But now I'm just going to go ahead and play around with my render settings before I render this thing out. So if you're ready, go ahead press render image and let's see how this thing looks. And there we have our finished cut. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot to put the glasses. One more time, I'm just gonna disable the glasses. And there we have a nicely rigged character render. And that's gonna just about do it for today's tutorial. If you did enjoy, a like and sub is very much appreciated. And if you enjoy the work that I do, consider joining my amazing Patreons in supporting this channel. The growth has been fantastic and you guys are amazing. But on that note, my name is Keelan. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.